I hope you can hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. That's the only reason I asked that question. I just want to hear somebody <laughs> say something back so I can hear them. Uh, I, I can, can hear, hear you. you. Uh, my eyes are open. I'm awake. I didn't have coffee yet, but uh, that probably will explain why I'm speaking with a frog voice. Hello, <laughs> Anne. I see oh, you're wow. saying hello to me. It's good to see you. Uh, everybody being here. Uh, thank you for doing this with me. I know you're a very busy woman. Let me kill the music here. I know you're a very busy woman. Uh, you're the queen of Clubhouse and uh, a number of other things. And you have taken out of your busy time uh, to uh, to do this live with me. Uh, thank you for pushing everything aside and doing this with me. As a, oh, you're welcome. As a very it's kind my pleasure. Person. The floor <laughs> is yours, madam. Um, anything off the top of your head you want to say? Um, I just want to say that, you know, this is coming across um, and meeting Paxton was amazing. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my passion, my purpose, my mission is to really help people who've been going through narcissistic abuse, um, who've been there, who are coming out of it, who are trying to get out of it. Use every spare moment of my time to really you know, help and, and be there for, for the community because we are a community. Um, so it, it's something that's really near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm a narcissistic abuse survivor myself as well as, as a cancer survivor. So, um, you know, it's sometimes we just need those people who truly understand um, what we're going through. You, you have, um, you have made an impact on a number of people. I, uh... When I have someone uh, join me on the show so that I can showcase them to the audience and they can get to meet someone, uh, there are a lot of people that, that know you. I don't know. Of course, you don't know this because this is my first time telling you this. There are a number of people that know you and follow your page uh, that when uh, they saw that you were going to be on, um, especially in the past 24 hours, and let me know that they were excited that you were going to be here because evidently your voice is uh, Vanessa. Your voice, Vanessa, is what a lot of people love. <laughs> so Aww. so um, <laughs> nice to uh, that, I just want you to know that um, you have had oh, an impact on Clubhouse. Uh, I see uh, Sally is here. Sally Polly. Oh, I, I love Sally. She's I a love sweetheart. Sally too. Uh, Hi, Sally. And, and, and Sa Sally, don't, don't think that I forgot about having you come back on the show. I haven't. Uh, it's something's Aww. coming up in September, October, November. You will be a part of as well. And I see my friend Coach Deb here as well, along with, of course, as I mentioned, Hi. Anne. Uh, I love Deb as well. She's a, a great uh, person when it comes to gratitude. Uh, but you are the diva and the lady of the day because I wanted to do this with you, as with all of my guests, that someone has a day in which they get to share their story, yes, but mainly their positivity. And you're a person that's driven to help other people. And you've had an impact in Clubhouse. I just want you to tell me something. I'm not on Clubhouse. So tell me what your experience is like on Clubhouse and the, the conversations that you're having that are having an impact. I'd like to know more about that. So Clubhouse, I joined in January. Um, and I've been hosting rooms and moderating rooms um, for narcissistic abuse. It's the narcissistic abuse group. And I hold a steady room every Thursday night at seven o'clock. Um, it could go an hour, it can go two hours, it can go three hours, go five hours. Um, wow. depending, on who, depending on who's there and you know who wants to share their stories, who wants to be part of the conversation live while we're there. Um, Clubhouse was a great thing, and it's it's a community. Um, a lot of us, Sally, that's where we met. Um, I've met some amazing people there, um, and we all have a mission, and that's to help and help heal, recover, bring clarity, bring community. Um, just like anything else, there's good and bad in everything. So, um, you know, Clubhouse, you just have to be careful about where you're going and, and where you're sharing. Um, okay. 
but um, really, truthfully, we have different topics every week, but it's always, I always want my community to realize it's a safe space. And by that, a safe space, I mean, there's no judgment, there's no shame, there's no blame. You come there to either share, support, or be supported, um, mm -hmm. validated, uh, and there's no, you know, there's none of the, that, that going on in, in, in my room uh, that I moderate. Uh, if there is, they're out. It's, it's not, I do not yeah. tolerate it. Um, it that's yeah. my safe space. As far as triggering, um, you know, we're all in different, you know, places in our journey. Yeah. So right. I can't promise that if something's said that it may not trigger someone. But I think that for the most part, just really planting the seed um, making people aware that they're not the only person going through what they're going through. Um, I just made this uh, uh, like a, you know, my mission to help people because, you know, I didn't go through what I went through for no reason. You know, it was placed in my path for a reason. And unfortunately, it was so long ago. Um, I learned, I did it all on my own because we didn't have communities. We didn't have social media. We didn't, I didn't have a therapist. There was no life coaches. There was nothing. So truthfully, try, trial and error was the only thing I had to learn from. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, I started Life Path as an inspiration, motivation thing. That's what it was originally. It just was to be there to inspire people and uplift people. Um, and then it just turned into so many people were coming to me ab about, you know, toxic relationships and, and narcissistic abuse and I said, I just, I have to do this. So I put the time aside and um, I created it into like a different, kind, kind of turned into a different path. So, but yeah, you're, Clubhouse you're, is definitely a baby of mine mm -hmm. that I, I try to do as many, you know, people ask me to moderate their rooms. I do some rooms with Sally sometimes, um, okay. but mine's a Thursday night, 7 p.m. You will find me there. <laughs> Um, you are an amazing woman. You are truly you. A, a, an amazing human being. Life has not offered you the opportunity, as most people, to just uh, have everything go smoothly. Uh, very few people can have that happen, if any, that there are no bumps in the road. You've grown from the things that uh, you've experienced. Uh, others didn't have support just as you've experienced. But now you're trying to be supportive and proving to be so for other people. But what was it like that you can remember now when you were going down this journey and there was no safety net, there was no coaching, there was no therapist. There literally was only you and the abuser. What was it like? I actually had to dig deep um, I had a, my daughter was three at the time, so I had to dig deep and be truly just take on the reins and say, you know what, I'm fighting for my life and my daughter because at the time I was going through cancer as well. So I took it really the bull by the horns and I said to myself, I'm not gonna, like, I need to be mentally in a good place. So I always tell everyone being in a positive mindset or trying mm -hmm. to be in a positive mindset. Like, you know, I used to say, I'm going to wake up every day. I'm not going to let the cancer get me. I'm not going to let, you know, this get to me. And because you're halfway there. So when you, when you really try mm -hmm. to, and I always talk about mindset a lot, because when we wake up in the day, we, get, we have the opportunity to choose, am I going to have a good day or a bad day? And I know that sounds so cliche, but it's really all mindset driven. Mm -hmm. So yeah. back then I would just, I just said to myself, there is no choice. Like there were days that like, I don't want to get out of bed. Who wants to do anything? Like you, sometimes you're just like, just getting up and like getting out of bed was, you know, but I mean, it wasn't an easy, right. I mean, listen, I was lifting myself up, up off the floor as well in tears, you know, day in, day out, up, down. And it was a roller coaster, but I truly just said to myself, you know what? we're going to get through it and we're just going to get there. And I was, I was lucky. I did have a great family and friend support system. I did. They just didn't understand what I was going through because none of them ever experienced it. And that's where I learned that you truly do need to be surrounded by people who've experienced it because 
my family and friends couldn't validate me. They couldn't say to me, oh, Vanessa, you know, I understand, like, because I was there and I, I get it. Like, I know it's because the stories we tell sound crazy. They sound insane because you know what? They are. These oh, aren't things yeah. that should be happening. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? They are. We're not crazy. We're not insane. It's our truth. That's what we've, you know, experienced. It's our life that we were living. So, you know, when you tell somebody a story and they say to you, oh my God, that's like a nightmare. It belongs like on a movie. It's like a, it's like they, because they can't wrap their head around it. They can't fathom the idea of how horrible and horrific the mental and emotional abuse, just that alone, you know? And right. I actually asked somebody once because um, a friend of mine actually was married to a narcissist, but she was also physically abused. And I always thought in my mind, I wanted to ask her, I said to her, I said, you know, I want to say something. And I said it today to someone, but I want to out of respect for you because I didn't have physical abuse. But I want to ask mm -hmm. you a question. In my mind, I feel I kind of rather be punched, you know, in my shoulder or punched in my face than go through a mental and emotional abuse. I said, how do you feel? And I was honest with her because I wanted to understand coming from someone who experienced it all, how they would feel. Mm -hmm. And she says, Vanessa, you're a hundred percent right. She goes, because when they physically harm you, you know what's mm -hmm. happening. She goes, but when you're mentally and emotionally abused, you don't even know what's going on. You're manipulated. And I sat there and I had this deep conversation with her and I said, and none of it's easy. None of it's right. None of it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. It's none of right. it. But, you know, I want mm -hmm. I always like to hear other people's stories as well. Like, I want to know where they're coming from. I want to I want to kind of get in that one on one and really just truly wrap my arms around the whole situation. Because unfortunately, you know, I didn't experience certain things that other people experienced. But we mm -hmm. all know in toxic relationships, there's always immense mental and emotional abuse yeah with narcissists there you know and that's another thing i always try to talk to people about because you know i knew my abuser it, it, he was diagnosed so i knew for a fact that's how i even knew what a what a narcissist was yours was diagnosed yes whoa yes. while you were together so that's how while you were together or before no. wow got it got it and okay. that's how i found out so you know, I, I talk to people because a lot of people get stuck on trying to get that label, that diagnosis of, well, who mm -hmm. am I with? But it's really not important because as everyone who does know me, I'm the firm believer, toxic's toxic. No matter what, it's, it's toxic. It's an unhealthy relationship. So whether you think the person's narcissist, sociopath, whatever they are or they're not or back and forth, if you're yeah. in an unhealthy relationship and it's toxic, it's toxic and you need to leave. Like there's no, you know, it's not like, oh, well, he's not a narcissist or she's not a narcissist or, you know, and even like in the workplace, um, I've come across narcissists in the workplace. Um, yeah. You know, you, you come across friends and, and family members and, and you know, mm -hmm. even parents. So it's like, you know, when something is off, it's your intuition, you know it. Um, yes. You know, you, you feel it. And I always tell people uh -huh. if something or someone doesn't oh. feel right to you, they're not right for you. And you don't need to stick around and find out why there's, there's no reason you just pick up and you keep going. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I, you know, I, it's really been truly something that I never realized so many people were going through. And when I did, I made it a focus of mine to help people. Um, you know, and that's why, like, you'll see me on Clubhouse eight o'clock at night, seven o'clock at night till ten o'clock, or even on maybe a Saturday or a Sunday, I'll hop you're, on. You're pretty much, creative. you're pretty much literally doing house calls. You're literally oh, that's what that, that's what you should that's what you should call one of your rooms house calls because that's what you're <laughs> making. You're like a doctor. You're like uh, nobody's gonna remember this because I I'm super old in, in saying this, but uh, the show Doctor Welby it's an old show, and there's a doctor who used to make house calls. You're like the Dr. Welby of emotional abuse. You make house calls on people. That's not supposed to mean anything to you because you're too young. You're still 18. But what I'm saying is you're, you're, you're too young. But, but uh, that's what you remind me of. Um, toxic is toxic, period. That's exactly what's on the screen right now. I'm looking at it. It popped up from the, the roots of empathy. Thank you for being here. 
Uh, Dr. Dan Jr., I'm going to stick this in real quick. Uh, quick. Uh, uh, I believe that says uh, Fab Picks. Um, uh, we Scammer. Uh, again, everybody, please, first time, if it's your first time here, feel free to put a name in, even if it's a fake name. If you feel emotionally safe, use your own personal name. That's totally up to you. I won't know the difference. Uh, put a name in so that I don't have to call out all the Instagram names. Feel free to talk with one another as well. Um, for those of you who have never met Vanessa and don't know who she is, um, Lady Vanessa, where can they find you? What is your Instagram page? Um, my Instagram's the Life Path Twenty Two. Um, okay. It's probably the one place I'm in the most. Um, okay. Clubhouse, how can they find you in Clubhouse? Clubhouse, if you go to the link in my bio, uh, you can okay. actually follow me on Clubhouse and you can follow my club. Uh, there's two links in there. Um, it's the Narcissistic Abuse Group. Um, and that's, that religiously, you can find us, find me there every Thursday at seven, religious. It's like that's, it's there. Okay, all right. When it comes to what you have experienced uh, one of the main reasons I wanted you on here is because of the things that you have experienced. It appeals to the audience that watches these shows that uh, we put on, these free live shows. You, on the other hand, have taken matters into your own hand uh, by trying to spread awareness about narcissistic abuse. And you also, you touched on it just a, a little bit ago, you also discuss mindset. Uh, a person's mindset and the way they, they handle matters. But you also try to make sure people can identify what they're dealing with, which you just talked about. Toxic is toxic, period. 100%. <laughs> That's so my even line. if you don't have the right, la if you don't have the right label to it, you don't have the, it it's have to toxic. So do me a favor for those, mm -hmm. a lot of beginners in dealing with abuse watch these shows and reach out to, to me and to us, my daughters and I, and we, we put these shows together. So explain as briefly as you can, what are some of the things that someone can identify? Really? I mean, there's a number of things just off the top of your head to identify that, wait a minute, this is not right. Intuition is true, but if somebody wanted some tangible things and there's a lot, what is toxic? If you had to help maybe a young woman that's just married some guy or, or a guy's dealing with a young lady or at work, what are one, two, three things that you can think of to pass on to help somebody understand this is just bad if this is happening? Okay, so I'm going to start with a few good things because then that will okay. encapsulate the workplace, friendships. So um, respect Okay. Is the first and foremost so when you are in any type of relationship that's healthy whether it be mm -hmm. work family friends romantic there's respect so there's respect for you as a person your time your boundaries um you know and and some kind of care or love okay so when you're dealing with somebody who is um in say a romantic relationship because I'll, I'll just use that for now. Um, as far as the respect, so we all experience in a relationship in the beginning, it's great. It's like, oh, so amazing. It's fun. It's exciting. It's great. When someone truly, truly loves you, and this is something I try to always bring someone back to, when someone truly loves you, they're going to do everything in their power to not hurt you in any way or make you feel less than, or, um, you know, bring you down in any way possible. So basically they're going to be a supporter of yours. You know, they're not going to say you're so amazing on Monday at 10 o'clock. And then at 12 on Monday, they're telling you you're horrible, you're worthless. Yeah. No one's going to love you, you know, mm -hmm. that you don't do. So if I always say, if you stand back, and you think about how you would handle a situation or you would treat another person. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I had somebody say the other day in one of our rooms um, that their partner called them and was like, you'll never meet anybody and you're not beautiful. And I met someone more beautiful oh, wow. than you. And so my wow. point is, 
I wouldn't even go up to a stranger and say that. You know, I wouldn't oh. walk up to, you know, you're going to, it's, it's, it's just not kind. And love mm -hmm. is kind. Love is respect. Love is unconditional. So there's no conditions. Like when people do things for you, you know, when I do things for people, I do it from my heart. I do it out of, you know, compassion and love and, and right. caring, right? I don't keep a list. When someone comes to you and says, <laughs> well, I did blah, 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 and they're naming yeah. all these things, truthfully, like, I can't, I can't even come up. <laughs> I've had people say to me, well, what did you do for me? And I have to stop That's pretty because good. who keeps a tally? Who's, who's thinking about all the things you did for somebody? I don't keep it yeah. in my phone of, oh, I did yeah. this for this person. You just do it because it comes from within. It comes from a real place of love and kindness, compassion, empathy, caring. If you know, listen, are you gonna have an argument or a disagreement with people? Yes. And this is another thing I always talk about, a mistake versus a pattern. People make mistakes, we're all human. You know, you have a conversation with someone. Okay, I gotta, I gotta write that. I gotta write that down. I'm sorry. Go ahead, keep going. Nope. Keep <laughs> going. I'm writing stuff down. Right? <laughs> a, a mistake versus a, a mistake versus a pattern, right? Correct. And, and people can make multiple mistakes, but a pattern is different. It almost Correct. becomes like a li a lifestyle that they carry right. no matter what relationship they're in. Okay. Correct. But the way you Got it. you can tell in your relationship what they're from is so if someone does something. Normally we go to them, we confront them. We say, you know, you made us feel this way or this is how I felt when you did this. Usually the person, if they feel bad, will say, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel that way. Okay, great. But if they truly didn't mean to make you feel that way, they will make sure that it doesn't happen again. They will try to think sure. about what they're no, going to sure. say or how they're going to say something. So perfect yeah. example, if I, I have someone I know who couldn't have children. Okay. okay. I have a daughter. All right. So I would always think about what I said before I said it to her. Like if I, yeah. cause you know, I would have liked to have more children. Okay. I wasn't in my car, but I would, I wouldn't say it to her because right. it's not something. So it's kind of like knowing and reading the room a little bit too. But when you, um, like when someone does something and they know now it's something that bothers you or you're not fond of, or, you know, you, it, it kind of makes you feel uneasy or uncomfortable, you know, they actually try to change that. But when the same thing happens over and over and over again, yeah. okay, that is a pattern. It's an unhealthy pattern. And it's something, mm. basically, there's no respect. There's no, you know, compassion. There's no empathy. There's, you know, you're the person truly doesn't care if they're hurting you. They're going to continue to do it because it's a pa it's their character. It's their pattern. It's something that is instilled with them and they're going to, you know, continue, continue on with it. So that's why boundaries are so important and actually honoring your boundaries and making sure that the people that are around you respect them. And boundaries aren't a bad thing. It doesn't mean you're cold and you, you know, it's protecting your peace. You know, so it's like, you'll see when people, you know, people are saying they love you, but mm -hmm. do they really love you? Are, you know, are they respecting you as a person? Are they respecting who you are and your, you know, your beliefs? Listen, we don't all agree on things, right? We all have different mm -hmm. upbringings and values and morals and who we are, but you right. need to have respect for it. And that's in anything that we do. You have to respect someone else's, you know, wishes, someone else's, you know, beliefs, someone else's time, you know, it, it's just, you have, that is where boundaries are the best thing because it really protects you from your peace and it lets the people around you know what you're willing to accept and what you're not. And if, if they're looking for what you're not willing to accept, they'll walk away because it's too much energy for them to keep trying and trying and trying. So I notice a lot of people who um, go through narcissistic abuse or, or in toxic relationships, um, mm -hmm. they are empaths. They are kind, loving, generous, compassionate people. And mm -hmm. the reason why they end up in those situations is because they haven't established boundaries. They haven't realized 
you know, what boundaries are or, you know, mm-hmm. what they can do to protect their energy and, and who they are as a person. So, you know, boundaries, like no one teaches you that. Like, did you ever learn them? I, I never learned that no. we have to have No, them. I Nobody see what you're did. saying. Yeah. Nobody yeah. teaches us. So it's like once you realize your worth and who you are and where you stand. So I always say, like, I come from a place of love and kindness. That's my core, love and kindness. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do to stay in that peaceful energy? And what am I going to do to allow the people who come in? Are they going to be in a good space or a bad space? Mm-hmm. So I, I truly always, um, when I try to talk about this, I try to explain to people that, you know, I don't take on people's energy anymore. If it's toxic, if it's negative, if it's, you know, I look and I say, yep. with all respect for them, <laughs> yep. that's who they are. I'm going to yep. let that be. But I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to take yep. on that negative energy. I'm not going to change who I am because someone mm-hmm. else isn't coming from a place where I am. And that yep. was one thing that I actually learned later on in life. And it totally allows me Changed to everything. In a, it's, it's such a peaceful way of living. Yeah. If I can, you know, teach somebody and, and, you know, I I even walk my daughter through it because you know what, I was never taught that these things when I was younger, you know, boundaries and and what to see and, you know, the way people react and the way they treat you, you know, we're so used to everyone saying like, oh, respect everyone and, you know, be kind to everyone, but nobody ever says respect yourself, be kind to yourself, be patient with yourself, you know, like nobody ever ever teaches us that right they right. they teach us yeah. about everyone else and and be kind and and do this but truthfully it starts with ourselves and once yeah. we start where we are mm-hmm. the whole outside world changes and it's it's your, truly amazing your outside world began to change if you had to say your outside world began to change and you had to pick a year, not a, not a month or a date, a year. If you look back at your life dealing with cancer, dealing with narcissistic abuse, raising your child, um, being Vanessa, when did being Vanessa really start to kick in? What year was that? 2012. So from 2012, you began to recognize that you needed a life pattern in which people's toxicity, their negativity, their being overly opinionated about your life and what's going on around you or in your world was not the center of attention anymore. And that's really before social media really kicked off. So you're living your life recognizing starting from 2012 that, wait a minute, I'm running this show. This is this is my bus. I'm driving this thing. I'm driving the car. I'm in charge here. I don't have to let someone else dictate my love and my kindness. But I must put up a fortress, as it were. I must pull up the drawbridge because everybody can't come in here because not everybody has the same mindset. Uh, In the chat, a number of things are happening for those of you who will watch this back later. But right now, I'm going to ask you this. From 2012 till now, from 2012 to now, to this very moment, you still get pushback and challenged by people who don't have your best interest, yes? Yes. And they try to disrupt the joy in even your day. Yep. How do you counteract that for some young woman, for some young guy, for some young person? Some millennial, because a lot of millennials are now starting to watch these shows. For some young person who has, they don't have a parent, they came from a foster home, they're ch- children of divorce, how can they hold on to their dignity and not get pushed around emotionally? You mentioned respect. You mentioned mm-hmm. boundaries. What else could you say that has helped oh. you hold your ground? Yep, self-worth. So self-worth. I'm my, right dead there. My journey began in 2012, but... That's when it started. That's when it really started 
where I said, I'm not going to allow what has happened to me to take another minute of my joy it was 2012. And I remember where I was and what I was doing when it happened, because, you know, we have so much of our joy taken from us that, you know, it, it's, we have to decide one day that mm -hmm. we need to figure out how we're going to stop it. And it's a journey. Like this didn't happen overnight. I didn't wake up in 2012 and say, okay, I'm, I'm where I am at this right. moment right. now. Right. It's, right. it's the truth. It's the honest truth. So as the years went on piece by piece on my own, I figured it, you know, I figured it out. So like when I say self-worth, I think the biggest piece of the whole puzzle came towards the, you know, came later um, self-worth, like, who am I like really digging in deep? Like, mm -hmm. where do I come from? Who right. am I as a person? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do I offer people? What do I bring to the table? Like, do I, where do I come from? Like, when I say I come from love and kindness, I say that with confidence, because it took me a long time to really sit there and figure out who I was. And, and what I bring to the table and whether it's, you know, relationships with my family or, you know, at work or with whoever I meet. Um, and once I realized who I really was and mm -hmm. what, and what I brought to the table and where I came from, I was able to say, I come from love and kindness. That's what I lead from. And I'm not going to allow anything other than that in my life. Right. So, and that's where we trickle down to the, you know, the, the whole, you know, respect. So the self, the self worth and just really knowing, you know, who you are, because I feel like a lot of people that I speak to, a lot of people that I hear, a lot of them don't, you know, they never look at who they are or no. they don't see who no. they are or what no. they bring to the table. And they get so busy trying to make everyone else happy because I was there too. I did the same thing, trying to make everyone happy, everyone happy. But at the end of the day, it's not good because you lose yourself. You lose your sense of self. You lose, you know, who you are. Yeah. So I think learning who you really are and what, you know, what you want to attract in your life is very important. Um, and I've had to cut people out of my life. I mean, it's people that I wouldn't want to. And I would think, oh, you know, this person would be in my life forever. But you know what, when you get pushback, and people really yeah. can't respect, and they're not treating you in the way that you really want to be treated, like the way you mm -hmm. should be treated. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, but it has to be done. And, and, you know, with time, it becomes, mm -hmm. you know, a little easier, unfortunately, but you know, just truly, I feel like that's where it begins because I feel yeah. a lot of people don't know their worth and they don't know where they come from and, and what they do. And a lot of people say to me, like, I don't, I want to learn how to not react. I want to learn how to respond in a healthy manner. And mm -hmm. I always go back to the pause. It, I am big on the pause. Any situation yeah. I'm in, and that's, if that's one thing everybody could take away from here, the pause, whatever situation you're ever in. And someone told me this once and it's so true and it's stuck in became second nature to me. And I'm going to share it with you. So maybe it'll hit home for you as well. But someone said to me, if you're smoking a cigarette and you're on a bed and it drops and you start flailing around, you're going to make 15,000 holes in, in the cover. Mm -hmm. But if you drop it and you pick it up, you may just make one. And that, fast forward was where I like kind of see the pause. So when you pause in any situation, whatever it may be, and literally stand back. So when I pause, I envision myself like taking a seat back. I actually do every single time. And it gives you that moment where you can not be reactive, but actually kind of come from a clear, a clearer mindset than just mm -hmm. going for the juggler and responding because you're, you're responding out of, of um, emotion. Right. And I've learned putting that into my life and really making that like a constant, consistent practice is, right. was so important. And it really changed. And now when someone's like going crazy and, and they're, I just step back yeah. and I'm like, 
It's kind of like you're at the zoo. It's like you're at the zoo, huh? It's like you're at the zoo and you're going like, look at that animal behind the cage acting so, so reactively and just. So you really have found yourself in a position where you're able to look at life through the lens of love and kindness, which protects your peace. Or, I mean, look, I've got tons of notes in front of me from just you talking from the beginning till now. Um, I'm pretty much going to be able to write a book because you've said some juicy stuff here. But you're pretty much looking at life through these lenses of love and kindness. That's what you're leading with. You know, people lead with a number of things. People can lead with their body, uh, uh, their body parts. People can lead with their intellect. People can lead, as you're talking about, with their emotions by reacting. And and they're always known by that. If you invite that person over, oh, my goodness, if you drop something, they're going to react to that. But you're talking about leading with your boundaries, with respect. You're talking about self-worth. You're talking about love and kindness. These are some juicy things. That means you're not in a position. When a person does this, if I did these things that you're highlighting, then that, that means when it comes to putting a pause to something and not getting caught up in what's happening around us, Vanessa, you're pretty much, you're pretty much highlighting to me if I practice what you're mentioning, these suggestions, I'm going to recognize toxic and not have conversations, even in a chat with people who are toxic, who are just looking to get a reaction. Correct. I'm going to recognize that I can hold on to my peace and not let that person who's trying to get a reaction get that reaction. I will ignore them. I will literally put a pause to that conversation or to who I'm dealing with because I recognize they're trying to get in and disrupt my peace and unity. Right. You, you, you need your own show. <laughs> you, you need your own show. You need you this. Look, you see the roots of empathy. Look, they dropped the bomb. Okay. See, listen, you, what you do is not to just, you don't just, so a person that's doing this is not just giving compliments to get attention or to give validation or, to say things that just shake up and cause problems. You're talking about living in your peaceful bubble and recognizing toxic and doing your best not to let it in to harm you or your daughter. That's work. Yes. It's a lot of work. Because and there's I, a lot of toxic people. Uh, listen, <laughs> That's I, I, a lot of work to put her in that protective bubble a, and keep an eye out, right? It's a lot of work, but this is the thing. For the people who are, and I know we'll, we'll go back to what we – what we started with with narcissistic abuse, toxic relationships, you know, this does not happen overnight. Like, I just want you to know, like, this may scare you a bit hearing this because you mm-hmm. may think, Oh, I'm never going to get there. It's never going to happen. I get a lot of people tell me that I'm just yes. telling you right now, please address I, what you're going to say. I don't mean to cut you off, but yes. I'm telling you right now, I get that a lot. They go like, I'm so tired, Paxton. When, when am I going to get, when are they going to stop? Why are they, you know, go ahead, please. Yeah. And so I I just want you to know the most important thing when you first come out or you're coming out or is you just need to heal. You need community. You need people who can be there for you. They can be your support. They know what you're going through. They can validate you. There's going to be a lot of five steps ahead, three steps back. It it, it is what it is. Why is that? I just have to ask. So why is that? So somebody needs to understand that it's going to happen for sure. But why does that happen? It happens because we say one day have that support and this thing. And then we start, I call it the reeling feeling. And I don't know if anybody can relate to it. Whoa, 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 like, wait, that's a new one. I that didn't it? come up in show prep either. What, no? what, what is that? <laughs> what, no, what'd you say? Say it again. I got to so write that it, down. So I call it the reeling feeling. Um, the because, reeling. So it's like. R-E-E? Again, Wait, R E E. Okay, real reeling feeling. Okay, go ahead. So you remember? I don't know. A lot of these people may be young, but remember the old reel movie reels, and they just keep yeah. going and going. And- <laughs> why are you try? Why are you try to act like you so old? You not even <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Okay. All right. All right. All right, right. Go ahead. So the reeling um, feeling. So the okay. Reeling go ahead. Feeling. So the reeling feeling is when you get one thought in your mind. So you have to understand. You've just been emotionally, mentally beat yes. down, abused. Yes confused. I mean, everything, you don't even know what's up and down. And that's the truth. One day you may realize, okay, I'm up. Okay, great. But 
guess what? I hate to tell you, it, you're not you're not staying there for long. It's just up yeah. and down, and that's you know it's the trauma that you've been through, unfortunately. Um, so you have that back and forth feeling. So when I say the reeling feeling, you get one thought. And now that one thought you get of the situation that you were in, you start thinking about all the things that were attached to it and they start coming fast. I mean, it's, it's something that a lot of people experience. I didn't realize it until I started talking to people that it's a super, super, super common thing. And that's when I, I always called it the reeling feeling because it was something that I associated it with. And it's kind of like every single thing that came from that one thought is all mm -hmm. the lies and all the craziness that went with it. So it's kind of like you just get so overwhelmed. So when you do take a step forward and you have support, and I even know like people from our clubhouse, like they have support that night. They feel good. They're sharing. They feel validated. But the next day, you know, they have a roadblock. They, they, ha they get either that reeling feeling or they get, you know, different kinds of feeling. Because listen, we don't have somebody by our side 24-7 to, right. you know, guide us and say, no, 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 like, you're right. Stop you're thinking saying. that. Stop right. thinking that. Okay, come on, let's go. Get out of bed. Come on, shave your face. Come on, shave your leg. Okay, right. Bye. Because listen, <laughs> everything you know, you know, was a dream. It was a lie. Everything it was that a lie. you lived yes. is not real. So now you're an trying to figure out. An absolute, I'm just going to piggyback that. An absolute, everybody, please, especially for yeah. those of you who, who write me. An absolute, utter, filthy lie. Okay, let's just, let's just, that's what actually, I'm getting into dad mode. I'm getting into dad mode here. So absolutely they lied. It was not real. Nothing they said is how they really, truly felt about you long term. It was in the moment and they just needed something. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you're, I, mean, <laughs> I had to get that off my chest. Go ahead. The one thing, and I say this with love and kindness to everyone who's listening and, and watches this, and, and I say this to people and I always preface it with that. A narcissist is not capable of love, period. They don't love their children. They don't love, you know, family members. They, they don't love, they're not capable of, you know, that's like a fish climbing a tree. Fish can't climb a tree. So if you're, <laughs> I mean, they just can't. So. Okay, you need to make a t-shirt. You need to start a merch line with a, with a fish trying to climb a tree and just put across it. You can't do it. That's like a narc trying to change. It just you just they just I mean, love listen, it's sad. being mean. It's, it's sad, but that was probably the one thing that got me to be able to heal because I keep because you keep asking yourself like, but why would they do it? Was I not like a good enough you know wife? Was I not a good sister? A good enough boyfriend, girlfriend? What, whatever it is, if you keep asking yourself because you think it's you. And that's the first thing that we all do is blame ourselves. And then we think we're yeah. crazy until you come across people who've experienced it and said, no, 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 you, this is, this is it. And then they start bringing you through the journey. Um, so it's, it's really, we will go and listen, when we take the three steps back, I always mm -hmm. say, don't beat yourself up because guess what? Breaking no contact. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, wow. But guess what? When you break the contact, you know what it ends up turning out to be? A learning lesson. You learn good from point. it. Good point. Nope. That's a good point. Because you know what my first question is when anyone says to me, oh, I'm so upset. I broke con there's no contact. I was doing so good. So I go to them, so what did you learn? That's my question always. And they kind of stop. And I'm like, well, what came out of it? And they sit there and they think, I'm like, well, did they, did you have a different experience than you're used to having? Like, was it different? And they're like, no, actually. And then they just start talking about how yeah. they just went back to their old ways. It starts out maybe nice, but it always ends up in the same pattern. So it's kind of gives you more validation sometimes. So I always tell people, I don't condone it. I don't want to encourage it, but if it does happen, don't be hard on yourselves because it's part of the process. We're all healing. Yeah, the, pa um, the pattern, the here. patterns, the patterns never lie. Then is what you're saying. Uh, it, matter of fact, uh, I'm just going to read something to you that's on because there's a lot that's happening in the chat uh, on the I screen. Know I'm trying to read uh, as I talk. Yeah. By the way, uh, I didn't warn you about that. It can keep going and it, it can almost throw you throw a person off when they come on the show. It may not do you, but I'm just going to say uh, this here. My guest, my guest from yesterday, Anastasia, 
Uh, she made a point oh. here, very encouraging. She says, yes, because we don't have someone by our side, she agreeing with you 24-7, we need to become that person for ourselves. Right. That's similar to what you're talking about. She was the guest on right. yesterday. And, and yeah. you make a very valid point. What we're talking about is not handing over to someone else our happiness. We are choosing to be happy, not because we have that person who has a pattern of lying and being devious and underhanded and disrespectful and unloving, not kind. We're handing ourselves over to them, even if we go no contact, essentially is what you're saying. And we need to be careful not to hand ourselves over to someone else and then turn right around and, as it were, complain about it or say, you know, and beat ourselves up over it. You're saying it's possible. No contact. Pretty good chance it's going to get cracked one time. We need to stay within, would you say, the, the, we need to fight the reeling feeling and reeling heal feeling. first. You said heal first. Healing. A person needs to focus on healing. That means yes. you can't keep going back. We couldn't. I couldn't. And another individual, if we're, we're going to use uh, ourselves or whatever the case may be, a person can't keep going back to someone who continues to have a pattern of disrespect and abuse toward us. Because we need a new community. You mentioned community. You mentioned support. So... If a person doesn't have a community and support outside of the abuser, they've got some healing work to do to start a whole new community of support. They need to go find a community because some people don't have that because they've been put in isolation. But they need to do that work because that means they're making a path toward healing. What, what do you think? I mean, I think that's why when I was saying before all those things, it comes in time. Um, and the healing part of the, the journey is that beginning part, that beginning where we really need to find, like, I, to me, I think community is probably one of the most important things. I think it's figuring out, actually finding out that everything that you're feeling isn't off, you know, is, is, is actually common to people who have gone through the trauma in relationships that, you know, you're feeling. Um, because once you get that and you start learning, and, and I tell everyone, educate yourself. Go, you know, you got the internet. Okay. Like, go out and that's, educate That's yourself. important. That's huge. Mm -hmm. how, yeah, how can they do that? How can, how can a person go about educating themselves from your perspective? I mean, there's, there's so many platforms. I mean, just alone and not to even think off the top of my head, but like clubhouse, like my room, mm. so many people have come there for the first time. Was like, I never spoke about this before. And you know, you, and it's not just because it's my room. I just have right, to right, be right, in right. it. So I'm, I can, no, right, right. but any, I'm using that as an example. Um, so, you know, people feel comfortable enough to share their story. And I always say, when you share your story, you're not only healing, but you're healing other people. So when you find a community in anything in your life, um, whether you're like a cancer survivor, a domestic violence, you know, survivor, a nurse, you know, whatever, whatever it is, when you find people okay. who've gone through the same thing as you, you're validated. You realize okay. that it's, you know, this, that you, what you're going through is common for people who have uh -huh. experienced what you've been going through. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to do this because, I love everybody that's been on my show, but I'm getting something from you right now, and I'm able to look at different responses, and you're, you're striking a chord with a lot of people what you're saying right now. So I'm going to keep repeating what you're saying for, for everyone to understand. We're really getting a recipe for success that you're providing, whether you know that or not. I'm telling you right now what I'm looking at that I've write because I'm writing down your words. So you can't see it. You're just saying it. I, I'm telling you. If I repost this, if I repost these as a post and tell people to contact you, they're going to do it. Okay, look at the screen. Uh, uh, everybody's talking about a number of different things, but there are in this chat that's on the screen, uh, like uh, uh, Anastasia has said, learn from Red Flags Dictionary. People are yeah. starting to put up different things 
to help other people. This is the conversation that you have started today, my friend, Vanessa. Your voice is making an impact. Leading with loving, uh, kind, love and kindness, uh, you, you've been able to open up this room, as it were, like you do on Clubhouse, in which people are able to talk about these things. But when it comes to what you just mentioned, educating yourself, you mentioned a person should share their story. You mentioned, of course, there are different platforms. People can do that. People can even write their own book if they want to. Whatever the case may be, sharing their story, as you highlighted, is extremely important. Extremely. But after they share their story, you also highlighted they need to find people that have gone through what they have gone through. Why is that important? And to fight the urge to isolate oneself. A person needs to fight that urge. They need to get out there and get with others that have experienced. Why is that important? It's important because it's when you're around a community who has been through what you've been through yeah. and they share their stories, you're able to, it, it's actually validating the things that you've gone through. So you hear things that are, oh, wow, like I'm not the only one, like this is yeah. real. Like it's actually that aha moment to make people understand that they're A, not alone, that there are people who believe them and see them. That's what's really important. And when you're in a community of people, unfortunately, who had to go through this trauma mm -hmm. and, and this abuse, it's actually a place where, you know, people are, you know, their stories are validated. They, they, it starts connecting the dots of, oh, that's why, or oh. And it, and it really yeah. brings light to what yeah. you've been going through. But you, it's very difficult, very difficult. And I'm saying this because I, this is how I went through this. It's mm -hmm. very difficult to do it by yourself. So isolating yourself is extremely yeah. not healthy because all you right. know is what you don't know yeah. is really where it comes down to, if that makes any sense. You, no, you're it makes perfect place, sense. You're in a place that you've just dealt with all of this craziness. You're in confusion. You're back and forth. You, you don't even know if you're coming or going. But when someone starts telling you what they went through and then other people start sharing what they went through, it becomes, um, it becomes more enlightening to what you've been through and that right. there is something out there. There is, this is going on. Other people have gone through it. This is something that you really have been through. It's not something you made up in your mind and you had somebody mm -hmm. emotionally and mentally beating yeah. you down every single day, whether you knew it or not. It's yeah. trauma. You know, it, it truly is. And that's why, like, when you surround yourself with people and you share and you listen and you, you learn. I mean, I think that's the, the best education. Yes, you can go online and you can. But when you hear somebody's, tr like, story and they tell yeah. you and you say, I went through the same thing. It's this, I, I feel the same way. Maybe a few things here or there that are different. But it mm -hmm. truly gives you that, like, light, that aha light bulb moment. And, you know, when you hear people that have gone through it and they, you know, they survived and they healed and they're moving on and they're helping others and it brings hope. It brings, you know, it, it's not going to happen overnight. All the things that we spoke about today, they do not happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It starts with the healing. And once you heal and get through what you've just been through, then all the other things start taking shape and they take shape by personal growth is so important and, and, and getting to know in the mindset and, and truly working on yourself to become, you know, a better version of yourself. Every day we have that opportunity. We are supposed to grow. We are supposed to evolve. That's who we are. And every day that's, you know, that's something that we have the ability to do, which is amazing. Yeah. Within, within our hands, we have the ability to create whatever we need to. It's not random. It's not by accident. We don't, there is no huge Big Bang that's going to make everything go away and we have a perfect life and a picket fence. We have to do the work. What you've described is work. I'm looking at five boxes in front of me of information that you have said just from your words, and I didn't even catch everything that you have said. Uh, you started off by highlighting to us the importance of being aware of what is toxic, 
even if we can't label it or going through divorce, they don't label it, whatever it may be. Toxic is toxic is what you taught us at the beginning. Thousand percent agree with you, my friend. Uh, You mentioned that respect is important. One of the key fundamental factors that if a person doesn't respect another person, especially Mm -hmm. in a romantic relationship where you're supposed to foster the foundation of a family and have children, if there's no respect, that means that there is no boundary. That means boundaries are being ignored or they haven't been put there. And then you highlighted to us in that same aspect of being aware, we have to have a measure of self-worth, a reasonable amount of self-worth that we're not going to let somebody just walk all over us and abuse us on a regular basis. I know that chat is really getting to you. You're looking at it. You, you want to you want to bite into it. it. You want to buy I'm into it. No, go ahead. Go do that. No, you don't I, need to respond. So you don't on. need to. You're doing great. You're doing great. It's always like that here, though. It's always like that. It's, they, they, they're, they're talking to themselves. They're totally ignoring us. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the other like, thing you highlighted to us. I just want to say one thing, though. If they do need me, you can always DM me. Um, yes. You know, I, I will get back. We're going to highlight that. We're going to highlight that in a, yeah. in a little bit, actually, because we've okay. gone 57 minutes and you have taught us a number of things, how to be aware of being toxic uh, in a toxic, situ- toxic situation. And uh, you also highlighted when someone truly loves you, uh, they will be supportive. Uh, it's a difference between a mistake and a pattern, a pattern, a lifestyle of abuse that they put on another person, uh, that a mistake is one thing. Uh, multiple mistakes may be one thing, which can be covered uh, with love, but a pattern of abuse is something different. The boundaries protect your peace is the thing that you said to us also mm-hmm. earlier. Uh, these are all juicy bites of information that can transform a person's life. But you also mentioned someone should educate themselves by sharing their story, finding others like them. And people can find you again at Clubhouse, but you are highlighting they can DM you as well. They can talk to you and reach out to you. Um, Why is that important that they reach out to someone, but even, as it were, reach out to you? Why is that important? You know, I always tell everyone that I'm available because I know that it's a struggle. It's a a hard time, Um, you know, and if it's not me, anybody who's been through it or anybody who understands where you're coming from you know Mm -hmm. I always tell everyone and that's my whole thing on on clubhouse dm me I'm here I'm here to talk I'm here to do whatever I have to do I mean I I truly want to help people and I want to see people just get that push to be able to move forward and do what they need to do in their life and live like a very happy healthy and peaceful life and it can be done so I just always leave myself open on my you know my dms are always open um clubhouse they have a back channel you can always reach out to me there you know i just want people to know they're not alone and that i'm here i've walked you in your shoes um and you know don't feel embarrassed don't feel afraid like there's no judgment like when i say safe space i mean safe space no judgment no shame you know no blame like there's no room for that here um in my space so you know, I want people to feel comfortable to say, hey, and, and people do, they reach out to me, they're like, oh, I, like, I, I was in the clubhouse or I, you posted something and I want to touch people's lives. I want to make them better. I want them to heal. I want them to move on. I want them to have an amazing life that they deserve. And that's, you know, that's why I'm here. And that's why, you know, I do what I do. You, you, um, you were, when I, when I, when I saw your page, um, you immediately are a perfect fit for what we try to do here, my daughters and myself, for our platform, because you really are encouraging. You're a very encouraging person. Um, I know you go ahead and type in what you're going to type in there. <laughs> um, but, but just for a moment, I, I, I want to take a moment. Everybody, please, I know a number of things are happening in the chat. I appreciate each and every one of you coming uh, and being a part of what uh, these shows do. They are a free live visual group chat. But for a moment, let's let's uh, let's just take a moment, everybody. 
And let's just turn our attention to Vanessa. I know everyone is either venting or highlighting a number of things. But everybody, just for a moment, first time I'm ever saying this uh, on this show, just for a moment, everyone, please just take a moment and stop chatting with one another. And let's notice our guest here today. I've never done that before. I'm just asking you to do that today. We have gone one hour and one minute. She has been talking with us. And everyone has been talking with one another. Just for a moment, I'm just asking. I need everyone to like, comment, share Vanessa's page and follow her. If you want to go to Clubhouse, knock yourself out. You're not going to regret it if Vanessa is there. But I need you to understand that we wanted her on this show because she's not a narc basher and a negative generator. She is a solution-based recovery person. That is what Narc Abuse TV Network is all about. So because of that, I am asking you, whatever stage you're in in your recovery, connect with her if you want to get better. If you want to leave behind the anger and the disappointment, feeling like a victim, or any of the above that may not set right with you, that has happened, and you want to let that go and wake up being happy, the majority of the time, if not all the time, please connect with Vanessa. There are a number of other people that you will see here after this show today that will come back, they've been on, or they will come here, and they will start to give you a message of recovery, not negativity. It's easy to bash someone if they let you down, dad, mom, whatever it may be, and label them. But this platform is moving toward recovery. Relationships, recovery, narcissism, is what you will find, even on our website that just started. You will be able to find shows, platforms, programs that will help you with your recovery and recognizing that you don't have to be mad and angry or triggered all the time. Vanessa is the first one that will lead in that. I'm going to find a way, but you're going to have a show on my platform. It's going to happen because yeah. you are inspiring and people need to have you as a household name. You need to be known for the way you want to help people. There are things about Vanessa that we have not discussed here, and you're going to find out. Matter of fact, we're going to talk. And hopefully next week you will see Vanessa here on this platform because I'm going to try to make sure we make this happen. And you're going to be here, and she's going to open up this avenue where if you want to talk about recovery, not about the narc and what they did wrong, you will find out that, yes, Narc Abuse TV may not be the platform for you because we're not about being angry about the narc. We're about no contact with the narc and recovery. You endured cancer. You endured abuse. If you had to say, in both cases, what helped you in both of those huge tragic, traumatizing events that happened to you. What helped you, Vanessa? Like I said, positive mindset. I had to always try to focus on the good that I had in my life. I had to just say, like, I'm not going to let any of it get me down. Like, I'm going to, I have a choice today. I'm waking up. I used to say, I'm putting my makeup on. I'm getting myself together. And I'm just going to take on whatever the day brings. I'm going to do as much as I can and just really positive just be you know listen you start the day off like that however the day ends but at least you're 50 percent there you're 50 percent in the positive mindset and i and i do remember like going through like treatment like people say like oh are you almost done you're so happy and i'm like or did you just start and i'm like um i try to just be happy i tried to be bubbly i tried you know just just by doing makes yeah. things happen so we have to do to make things happen. And that's why when you do 
positive. You do positive mindset. You do good things. You, tr you know, you do. Like we always say, we try, we try, we try. When you do them, yeah. they happen. So I see people always saying, well, I'm trying. And I'm like, no, you're doing. You're doing it. Yeah, yeah. We find ourselves each and every day struggling with a number of things, including memories of people who let us down and emotionally abused us or mentally abused us. But what happens is we end up finding others that we can gain inspiration from. We hope here on Narc Abuse TV Network to bring you as many people as possible who you can find inspiring. They will have stories of abuse, physical, domestic violence, and a number of other things. You will start to see that and hear that, and you will hear their stories. They're not coming here to push a book. They're not coming here to make money off of you. They're coming here to share their story in whatever platform and way they have it uh, to deliver it to you. It may be in a book. It may be their, their, their YouTube channel. But you're going to find individuals just like this beautiful person in front of me, just like my guest yesterday and all the guests before her today. So get ready for the ride. Vanessa's not going anywhere. I'm going to kidnap you and coerce you into having a show on this platform, just like Coach Jess, her show that will be on this Saturday. Whatever you do, remember, we are not like everyone else here on this platform, and we're not going anywhere. So if you want encouragement and positive conversation, but you want the truth about narcissism from a number of experts, you will find it with us. Vanessa, thank you for your time. I know you took away from other things in, in your life to jump on and do this uh, per se last minute, as it were. But I appreciate you sharing part of your story. But if you want the full story, you need to go like, comment, share, follow her page. You need to talk with her on Clubhouse. You need to connect with her if you want the full story. If you have a show, I see May was here. Uh, I know Coach Deb was here earlier, uh, just in case uh, she's here or if she watches it back. Anyone else that has a show, anybody that you see on my platforms, uh, Open Session Podcast and Narc Abuse TV Network, kidnap them. Get them on your show if you want positivity. We only have positive guests on our show who will tell you the truth. You need respect. You need boundaries. You need self-worth. And do not tolerate foolishness because toxic is toxic. Period. You deserve the best. Don't settle for anything. You know the expression, less than that. You deserve it. Whether you're male or female, don't fool around with people who play games. You deserve the best. You are the prize. So with that in mind, we wanted you to know that you will not just have Vanessa this time. Uh, my guest yesterday Anybody that you see coming across, there's a pretty good chance we're going to be doing some work later in the future. But you, my dear friend, it has been an honor and a pleasure to have you. Uh, you, have, wow. you, you inspired me before we ever did this. Uh, it's in your eyes. It's in your cheekbones. It's in your little dimples, <laughs> in your smile. You want people to be happy. And um, I am so happy that I got a chance to do this with you. The first of many of things we will do yeah. together. Everybody, so I love each and every one me. of you. Um, everybody, you're always welcome to come back for this open chat. I just, first time, I just wanted to let everybody know what I really think about this beautiful person no. and her story. You're more than welcome to join anytime. And uh, if you have to make a fake account and join because you don't want somebody to find out that you're here, you can do whatever you need to. But come and join and tell a friend. Narc Abuse TV Network is on the air for good. And we're going to have great shows and great programs and great people on that will have their own shows, like the Coach Jess show uh, this Saturday at 1 uh, Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern time. And now we got to find a way to get you uh, a show, girl, on this platform because people need to talk to you and well, you need to inspire news. them. Good news. Today's yes. Thursday, Clubhouse, yes. 7, 7 p.m. Tonight. There you go. There you go. Okay, everybody. Come join us. Uh, go join us. Yep, go ahead. Go ahead, Vanessa. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say come join us. I forgot. I'm thinking Thursday. Today's Thursday. So <laughs> 7 o'clock tonight, you'll find you me go. on Clubhouse. The app's free if you haven't joined. Um, the app's free. So you can just hop on. Um, and there's actually in my link, just click on the, the Clubhouse um, Narcissistic Abuse Group. 
And seven o'clock, uh, you can join the club, you can hit the bell, get notifications, but I'm there every night, 100% there every night, seven o'clock on a Thursday. So you can find me there if you need to share, if you need support, validation, whatever you need, we're there. That room is pretty much, that's what goes on there, is everyone sharing and, and coming, just getting supported and be supported and validated. So you can come find me there. <laughs> You're amazing. Find, find your tribe with Vanessa uh, and uh, listen to Vanessa's voice. She's got a great deal of insight, and uh, she, she wants to truly be encouraging in your life. Recovery is possible. You don't have to stay angry and upset with the childish things that someone did to you, even if it was your own father that let you down, if it was your own mother, or whatever it may be. You can pivot and move away from those things toward a better life, without a doubt. Uh, thank you very much, Vanessa. I appreciate thank it. You. I know you're locked in. You're locked in on that chat, aren't you? You want to? You want to? You want to? You want to tear your? I see it in your face, <laughs> but. That's the way it goes here on live here, IGTV. We do have to go. Uh, but if everybody else, please reach out to her. Please show some support because I guarantee you this. You deal with Vanessa, uh, she's got your back. Trust me, she's got your back. You just, you'll find out. Just reach out to her. Thank you, Vanessa. You're welcome. Thank you for doing Thanks this, my so friend. Much. Everybody, uh, you're take welcome. care. See you guys hopefully soon. Tomorrow, we've got a live Zoom show. Uh, you're more than welcome to uh, be a part of that. It's free. Uh, it involves life after divorce in dealing with a narcissist. Mm, that's about it. I can't think of anything else. We're out of here. Thanks. Bye. See you guys soon. <laughs> Bye.